So now we study the prokaryotic genome. Uh, prokaryotes are the organisms in which the DNA is not enclosed in membranes, so there is no nucleus. So as there is no nucleus, there are no justification to have other membrane bound organelles. So these are relatively simple cells. Here in this diagram, we see a prokaryotic cell, which is a bacteria right here. So we have the uh, genome, the DNA in the shape of a, a big chromosome in the middle and ribosomes, small structures, obviously protein synthesis is needed for every organism. So ribosomes are also there. And then we have a relatively simple cell and then we have its walls are different layers. Here we see a comparison between a eukaryotic cell and a prokaryotic cell. So as we see in these circles, we have all those membrane bound organelles which are present. One of them is mitochondria. So that is involved with the respiration process. So in which the food is broken down into the energy. So um, there is a hypothesis that this mitochondria actually evolved from a bacteria. That hypothesis is called as endosymbiont hypothesis. So here is a comparison between the sizes also. So eukaryotic cells are complex and bigger than prokaryotes. So um, the first prokaryotic organism that was sequenced was Haemophilus influenzae. Uh, we have seen that in a previous uh, section. So that was the organism that was sequenced in a relatively um, moderate cost and, and with an efficient pace and it paved the way for sequencing of the other organisms. So those study of those prokaryotic organisms is, is, is important. So there are different criteria um, for selection of those arg organisms to be uh, sent into a genome sequencing project. So foremost important them is that uh, there might have been intensive studies on that organism. So it's been a model organism and that has been investigated in details. Uh, it might be important human pathogen. So that's why we are studying uh, its genome. Uh, it might have some phylogenetic importance and the sequences were annotated as they were sequenced. So here in this diagram, we see different prokaryotic organisms, representative prokaryotic organisms and their genomes. This E. coli that was sequenced by Blattner et al. So that has a genome size. So we see its phylogenetic group also. It's a bacteria. Then in this set, we have just one archaea and we have rest of them which are bacteria. So genome size is 4.6 MBs and a number of protein coding sequences are there in these parenthesis. So they were 4000 genes in this organism. Then our key methanococcus, that is 1.66 MB and it has 1682 genes. Then we have Haemophilus influenzae, 1.83 MB and 1743. Uh, it's a human pathogen. Uh, we can also have descriptions of these organisms like E. coli is a model organism. And then obviously this archaea, it grows at high temperatures and it produces methane. Maybe good to have natural gas from it. Uh, we can also have other organisms like mycoplasma, pneumonia, uh, pathogens, obviously. It was 0.82 MB and 676 genes. And then we have in the end, we have this syncocystis, that is a bacteria. So that is 3.57 MB and it has uh, 3,168 genes. So prokaryotes are simple genomes. Um, easy, they are easy models to study the biochemistry and physiology of life. And then uh, sequencing is normally done on these simple genomes first and then it uh, helps exploring the complex genomes.